Hello and welcome. The number of coronavirus cases continue to rise across the country with some cities and even states or parts of states examining going back into lockdown. The city of Chennai, for instance, has already gone into a second lockdown in anticipation of uh, a higher number of cases and preparing itself for a possible pressure on the health and medical system. The good news, however, is that uh, some marketing authorizations for new drugs or other old drugs uh, have come through Cipla and Hetero. Uh, companies have got authorizations for antiviral remdesivir for restricted emergency use. Uh, around the same time, which is a couple of days ago, Glenmark Pharmaceuticals, a Mumbai company, has got an approval for manufacturing and marketing antiviral favipiravir. So these are two medicines, uh, that's favipiravir and remdesivir, that are likely to be available in the hands of medical professionals who are fighting coronavirus. The question that we are asking is, uh, how do these two medicines work? Uh, what do we know of them today as opposed to what we knew of them earlier and what they were used for? And how are they likely to impact uh, positively the progress or the fight or the treatment of patients who are suffering from coronavirus. To discuss this, I'm joined by Dr. Romel Tiku, Associate Director, Internal Medicine at Max Healthcare in New Delhi. Dr. Tiku, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. So, uh, so tell us, I mean, you know, so there are two drugs, uh, as, as I mentioned, there's uh, favipiravir and there is uh, remdesivir. Both are now uh, or likely to be soon in your hands uh, uh, formally. Uh, what does this mean? See, uh, basically, as of now, we don't have any approved treatment for COVID-19. These drugs also, as you said, are meant only for emergency use, as in other countries like U.S. Uh, now, a lot has been said about remdesivir and favipiravir. Let me talk about the latest one, which is favipiravir first. Now, uh, DCGI has uh, approved it for restricted emergency use. It is actually a repurposed drug. It was earlier mm -hmm. used uh, to treat influenza in Japan for many years. And then they used it for post-exposure prophylaxis and treatment of Ebola virus. So it's not a new drug. And uh, there are lots of studies going on. In fact, more than 30 trials are going on in India, UK, China, and Japan regarding Pavi We don't have enough data on it right now. Whatever data we have is a very small data, which is from these small studies done in these countries. It's mostly used in China, Japan, Russia, and UAE. And uh, we can't really go by this data. So we need right. more evidence from uh, large-scale randomized controlled trials, which are happening right now. But I'm sure it's going to take a while till we have the uh, definite data and uh, conclusion of these trials with us. Then only we can seriously talk about the efficacy and safety of this drug. But uh, the interim reports of the, I think, the Glenmark trial, they're in the phase three uh, clinical trials, probably seems to be encouraging. That's why they've been given a go ahead for marketing and manufacturing of the drug. But apart from that, there is not enough evidence as of now. But let us wait, maybe. Again, the catch here is uh, the mechanism of action of this drug is against RNA polymerase, which is the enzyme meant for replication. So it has to be given in the early stages of the disease. So it's not meant for all COVID-19 positive patients. It's not meant for critical patients because by the time they are in that phase of the disease, they already have uh, enough virus replication happening. So again, for asymptomatic, mild, young patients, there is no treatment required. So really how to choose your patient mild to moderate ones, and it might, if it's proven to be efficacious and safe, then it might be a potential blockbuster drug in the sense that uh, it can help those uh, mild to moderate cases. Right. Uh, it will prevent the uh, progression to uh, severity, and they might actually not get critical and need hospitalization. But as I said, we don't have enough data. The way things are at the moment, we need more and more data. It has been uh, approved for um, emergency use. But let us have some more data on this. Right. And we're, and we're talking about Fabiflu. That's the, that's the yeah, brand name of the Glenmark. Yeah, we are talking about the Fabipiravir. Now, if we talk about Remdesivir, on the other hand, again, yeah. uh, we don't have enough data on that. Uh, in April, uh, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease in America, they came out with this uh, interim report of the trial, which is actually an ongoing trial, which, is, which again is a randomized ongoing trial, multi-center trial. And they said that uh, it wasn't a totally knockout drug, but it reduces the recovery time compared to a placebo from 15 days to 11 days. But again, the uh, effect on the mortality wasn't much. In fact, it was 11% and 8%, which is not significant statistically. So 
we again need data on remdesivir also. There are lots of trials going on, even in India trials are going on, solidarity trial is going on. So till we have definite evidence, we really don't know. But because we don't have any drug and we can't wait for the conclusion of these trials, we have to save lives. I think that is the reason behind giving approval for emergency use. Till then, we'll keep using them. And once we have definite evidence, then we can really say yes. But in these patients, lots of things are being used. We're using remdesivir, we're using tocilizumab, we're using convalescent plasma, steroids. So you really don't know what is helping them to get out of this. So it's all anecdotal based on your experience, limited experience that we have and the limited studies which are being done. If we compare remdesivir with uh, favipiravir, then again, remdesivir is a drug which is intravenous, has to be given in a hospital setting, is expensive. And if you, but again, it's meant for critical cases. It's meant for people who are having a moderate to severe disease are on oxygen are in the ICU. Compare that with favipiravir, which is meant for mild to moderate cases. It is easy to administer. It's in tablet form, is relatively inexpensive and has a good safety profile. So both drugs have uh, different uh, sort of uh, patients to deal with. But again, uh, the mechanism of action is more or less the same, works on the RNA polymerase and prevents the viral replication. But you really got to choose your patient. And as I, as I said earlier also, we need more and more data on these. Till then we can use it as an experimental drug on a trial basis, emergency use. Okay. Right, and and I'll come back to these two drugs in a moment. But uh, you've been treating patients all this while, and I'm I'm sure you're also having success at this stage, which is the mild to moderate stage, where you are saying that these two drugs play the maximum role, uh, or at least uh, uh, the favipiravir plays a role. So uh, tell us about what is working at this point, and how could these potentially, if they work as advertised, uh, will contribute to your uh, efforts. See, as of now, we have not been using it much. Remdesivir is yet uh, to be available commercially. It's been used in one-off cases, but uh, I think soon we'll be having enough supplies of uh, remdesivir because it's being manufactured here. And Fabipira, we... No, is my question is, what's the, what's the subs what is the substitute that you're using? I, I don't know if substitute is the right term to use, but you're using something else at this stage of See, treatment. Right now, we don't have any antiviral drug, specific antiviral drug. Mm -hmm. What we were using is hydroxychloroquine. And uh, in those cases who have a cytokine storm going on, critical patients you're using tocilizumab, which is, which is not an antiviral drug. It is meant for a different indication. It's meant for the uh, cytokine storm where they have ARDS, lung involvement, all that inflammatory changes happening. So there you use steroids and tocilizumab. Convalescent plasma, again, is being used in moderate to severe cases where there's impending ventilation required. Patients are getting sicker. So there is no specific antiviral drug that we are using at, the, at this point of time. The only antiviral drug we were using was the anti-HIV drugs. But again, there's not enough evidence that it really helps. So in that sense, these are the main two antiviral drugs in our armory right now. So we'll have to see how the experience goes. But whatever limited data is with us, it seems to be promising. But yeah, as I said, Right, we'll wait. More, right, more and data. and and uh, what's your sense uh, right now, Dr. Tiku? I mean, the last time we spoke, uh, things were definitely in much better control. Today, uh, your many of the hospitals are uh, overwhelmed, uh, perhaps uh, uh, to put it mildly, and uh, things are quite different. Uh, how are you seeing it? Well, it was expected anyway. I think last time we spoke, we were in the lockdown, so obviously cases were lesser. But once uh, the economy opened opened up, the offices started, the public transport started, the numbers were anyway bound to go up. And there has been a spike, especially uh, June onwards. But we have to deal with it as uh, we have been have to ramp up the uh, healthcare infrastructure. We have to keep adding more and more beds. We have to do more and more testing. We can't just uh, go by the numbers now. It's We are beyond numbers. Uh, they were anyway expected to go up and we can't focus on the numbers. We have to focus on saving lives now. Uh, nobody should die of COVID-19 and people should not run from one hospital to other just because they're not getting a bed. That That's going to be our focus. There should be more transparency regarding the availability of beds. There have, has to be more and more availability of beds so that people know where they have to go. So somebody who can really guide them. Each hospital should have some sort of a help desk which sort of guides these people. If you land up in a hospital and there's no bed, it's not a COVID-specific hospital, does not mean that you have to run all over the city. Right. They, there has to be some way of handling you, sending you in an ambulance to a specific COVID facility. And keep on adding the number of ICU beds, keep on adding the number of hospital beds so that we have more and more oxygen 
uh, available beds because uh, right now the focus is basically on saving the old, the vulnerable. They are the ones who are getting into trouble. They are the ones in whom the mortality is more. So younger ones, even if we get it, we have to isolate ourselves. We have to take some right. treatment. We don't even need any specific treatment. So focus, I would say, as of now, numbers have definitely gone up. Focus on ramping up the infrastructure. Focus on adding on beds. Save the elderly. Save the vulnerable. And save more lives. That should be our focus. And people should f follow the norms. Follow the protocols. Wear the mask properly. And uh, do social distancing. Hand washing. Uh, they have to be really, really, very particular about these things. They are not doing it well. Right. Uh, last question, uh, Dr. Tiku. So uh, these two medicines, uh, will patients ask for them or are doctors uh, likely to administer them on their own? Uh, will there be consent required? Is there is there any change in the way uh, the administering protocol is going to Definitely out? for restricted emergency use, you need to take a consent. And it can't be given, as I said earlier, can't be given to everybody. You have to choose your patient who has the indication for this drug and then only you can give it. As I said, remdesivir is more for sick patients, the ones who are on oxygen are in the ICU. And on the other hand, favipiravir is for mild to moderate cases. So that decision lies with the doctor, the physician. He will decide who needs which kind of treatment. Not everyone needs antiviral treatment. So we have to go with the uh, analysis of the uh, physician, whatever he decides. We have to go with that. Right. And a, and a more slightly more subjective question. Do you feel now, even though the number of cases are rising, that uh, your community or uh, is, is in better control of this disease or is, are we roughly where we were, let's say, two months ago? See, cases uh, have uh, gone up. It has spiked a lot. So we are dealing with more and more numbers and we are dealing with it because we've been adding beds, we've been adding hospitals. Now, earlier there were very few private hospitals. Now there are more and more hospitals. Earlier there was lesser number of beds, ramping up the beds also. So we're dealing with it till now. But the only issue will be if more and more numbers are added up and the cases go beyond the roof, then will we be able to handle it? Do we have enough manpower? Do we Will we be able to ramp up the infrastructure more right. and more? That is going to be a challenge. Till now, yes, we are managing. It is difficult, but we are managing. But time will tell us how, how it will unfold in the next few days. Right, uh, Dr. Thiku, uh, thank you very much for joining us and I wish you and your uh, teams the very best in fighting this disease. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.